，女士们、先生们，下午好。怎么样？我叫钟文露，我的公司它叫智能农业分析。我很开心有这个机会来给你们介绍一下我的公司。Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Manuela Zonenstein. My company is called Smart Agriculture Analytics. And、uh, yes, I flew in from Beijing.、Uh, I landed yesterday morning, so it's a little jet lag right now.、Um, <laughs> And、um, I'm going to start out with a pop quiz for you. How much do you think China will spend on agricultural technology in the next 24 months? Five hundred million dollars a month, five billion dollars a month, or none of the above? The answer is C. None of the above, totaling a trillion dollars by the end of 2015. They haven't yet lined up the next wave of investment for the following five-year plan. So this is the market that my business is cataloging to help agritech investors and suppliers successfully navigate. We're the leading information source of market data for agricultural technology, starting in China, the world's largest agricultural market. There's a bottleneck facing the agriculture industry. As emerging markets enter the modern agricultural、uh, model, they're smaller scale and they face different issues than the solutions that are currently available on the market. What SAA does is we provide emerging market information. There are no new channels to drive innovation in agritech. We open those new channels in emerging markets. There's no information. On customers in these countries, we provide granular data starting in China. How do we do this? Through our proprietary database. Now, those three issues that I just mentioned, we address them in various ways. We provide、uh, data that generates leads for agritech businesses and also measures、uh, capital flows for potential investors. We drive new market channels.、Um, we're covering smart ag in China.、Um, we are getting ready to.、Uh, we hope to move into Brazil in about 18 months. So we have、uh, the languages that are hosted currently are English, Chinese,、uh, Mandarin Chinese, and Portuguese. And we provide granular data on the entire market and supply chain, including,、uh, as was noticed before, organizations, locations, which are geotagged. Technologies, farms, people, transactions, events, government policies. So, if you're an agritech supply company, you can search through my database and identify precisely where you should enter China, and identify the policies that will help you do it, the financial incentives that are there, supported by the Chinese government,、uh, which companies you may want to partner with, who you want to work with as a distributor, or who's competing with you. Um, how to protect your technology? Who you might want to partner with for advisory services, etc. So we're using a subscription model.、Um, the News Weekly service, which is a free、um, aggregation、uh, that goes out every Monday,、um, aggregates the previous week's news on the business of agritech.、Uh, that's been running for 15 months. Three weeks ago, we launched our paid daily. Um, and we have three paying clients for that direct subscribing to us,、um, and、uh, we plan to launch our first insights product at the end of、uh, this year.、Um, it will be a white paper describing what the third plenum means for the agribusiness in China.、Uh, our database we hope to launch Monday, March 31st, and that will be a list of all the government mandated demonstration sites for agricultural technology. And we also offer、uh, offer some advisory services. So as you can see, we are projecting quite aggressive growth across news aggregation database insights and advisory.、Uh, we hope to、uh, be out of the red in 18 months,、uh, so middle of 2015. And then you'll notice at the top there's partners, very narrow blue line at the top,、um, and that is our distribution model. That's how we get out through distribution partners, who I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, our free weekly newsletter, conferences, PR.、Um, I'm a former journalist, so I plan to be writing op-eds and、uh, am developing relationships now with uh, various uh, news resources. 
So our goal is to focus on the leading agritech supply countries. Um, Canada, United States, Brazil, Europe, starting first in the United Kingdom and then France and Germany, Israel, Australia, Japan, and Taiwan. And I have relationships with most of those countries. And to provide them the information to uh, encourage the leading technology providers to come to China and to give them the confidence and knowledge they need to succeed in China. And once we prove our model in China, we hope to expand to emerging markets globally, to South America, Africa, India, Southeast Asia. We have demonstrated traction since I went full-time seven months ago. We, so in terms of the distribution uh, partners I mentioned, we have signed with Dow Jones and Data Layers. We are live on Data Layers and we go live on Dow Jones news feeds in January. And we're, discuss we're in discussions with other platforms and that's how we will roll out to a broader market and build our brand. Uh, we signed one agritech supplier and two agritech investors with various others in the pipeline. So we're really proud of our network, especially our Chinese domestic network. I've lived in China for uh, five of the last six years. Um, we've been invited recently through the joint U.S.-China collaboration on clean energy um, to train mayors, 160 mayors every year on agribusiness solutions. And then they can come to us directly for introductions to those companies. In terms of media, uh, the Nongmin Ruba, which is the uh, leading state-owned Farmers Daily publication, has approached us for partnership, which would avail us to 50 years of agriculture news data. Um, finance community in China is very welcoming to what we're doing. Uh, agribusinesses, academia. We're building relationships with the network of agricultural universities throughout China. It's an incredible network. Um, very talented individuals that are completely overlooked by agribusinesses currently. We also can access the black box of information that is China. Agriculture and agricultural technology is an essentially a non-existent um, industry, an investable asset class. We are the first mover in that way. We are building the taxonomy to structure the industry. Similarly, um, it's very hard to understand what's happening in China. You have to have feet on the ground, and there's no data that's available. So we are building data from the ground up. And it's the right place and the right time. Can we advance to the next slide? Great. Now, who are we and who am I? Um, so I was born in Brazil, moved to the States when I was seven, grew up in the Midwest, um, in Evanston, Illinois. Before I went to Harvard, I worked at the Chicago Board of Trade uh, on the commodities exchange floor for a year. After college, moved to China and focused on the China-Latin America relationship as a journalist and decided that I wanted to focus on this huge opportunity um, that China was facing as it modernized its agricultural system for the first time. And went back to school to focus on China's agricultural policies. Uh, the builder of our database, Zachary, um, oversaw the Human Development Index at the UNDP. Even was at the U.S. Agricultural Trade Office in Beijing. Michael was the second hire by New Energy Finance to work in New York in a sales capacity prior to Bloomberg acquisition. And BNEF is a model that we follow very closely. Richard Hertzfelder has successfully run an agribusiness information service out of China, which was acquired. He also ran the Associated Press during the Olympics and successfully prosecuted a copyright case. We're also very, very excited about our local Chinese staff. Um, and that's one of the most amazing opportunities of being in China, is that you have incredibly smart, ambitious people who are less expensive, I have to say, that currently than in the United States. So we're um, expanding actually to second tier cities, which is where the best universities are for agriculture. Um, so we are opening an office in Xi'an, um, uh, probably in January, and then Hangzhou with government subsidies. And we're setting up sales staff in New York, Shanghai, Hong Kong to begin with. It's a proven business model with many successful exits. I wanna draw your attention to the bottom two uh, recent acquisitions in the agriculture space. So we're predicting that there is going to be increasing movement in this area. Um, we're very unique. Instead of covering commodities, we're covering the technology of agriculture. 
And we are raising 200,000 to last us for these 18 months that we hope will uh, move into a sustainable model. So uh, as I mentioned, we want to sign additional distribution platforms. We will launch our data portal and prove product market fit. We want to increase the lifetime value to the customer acquisition costs. We're currently at three. We would like to move that up if possible. We'll gather client channel and usage data, and we want to recover our customer acquisition costs within 12 months. So that's what we are hoping to prove. Welcome your questions. Okay, uh, so why are you only raising $200,000? <clears throat> um, we would like to first prove, we would like to first prove that we are doing this the right way. Um, and we, if we can do this in as focused a way as possible and be precise in our model, then we hope to scale up very quickly after that. Um, in the 18, after that 18 month target, I would like to go global actually. Um, and I think that, that to be precise in our data gathering and structuring, we ha we aren't, uh, it's not about spending a ton of cash all at once, but it's about being very intentional and very focused. And we don't think we need to take much more money than that. Also, we believe in the business. Uh, and I wanna retain control over how we grow. So um, then the next question is, uh, on your business model, obviously you've got different uh, different revenue streams that you're looking to uh, create with your business model. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on the size of the revenue streams from uh, the relative size, not necessarily dollars, but the relative size of the revenue that you think you'll gain from these different? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, uh, as you can see toward the end, the database does start expanding. And we would like to actually ultimately position ourselves as a data company. Um, more, I guess, leaning toward a capital IQ model than let's say a Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Um, and that's what I would really like to blow out. Uh, the analytics and news aggregation is sort of the, is the, it's what people, you know, it's how it's you follow the data, yeah. It's a sweetener. Um, and that's how we sell the data. That's also, it's a way to turn our costs into revenue. So all of our news feeds that go out go into our database. We're getting paid for those news feeds. So we're basically paying our way to gather data. Um, we're also, back to your first question about not raising a lot of money, we're doing everything uh, manually right now to test that we understand exactly what the, um, <clears throat> the structure of the database should be and confirm the integrity and the taxonomy. And then we can automate it. And it'll be a smart, um, smart uh, tool where as you add more categories into the database, the, um, the program learns to search for those automatically. So actually, I think that we don't need a huge staff to, to do this. Thank you. 